So I thought I would just add to it patience through affliction. And to see the examples in the Bible help us as living beings to see that we don't have to go through affliction to have patience. You know, we can have patience without having to go through it by learning it. But sometimes we have to learn it. And sometimes it's the hard way. Sometimes it's the hard way. Some of us choose the hard road and some of us choose the easy road. But the, the ultimate goal is that we're trying to get to heaven. And which, which path do you choose? I mean, myself, I choose the, the easy road. I don't want affliction in my life. I don't want pain because pain hurts. I don't want it. So Dwayne taught a good lesson this morning. Uh, I want to say that um, Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in, in the room. Um, this is the first day of the week. So that the Lord prepared for us that we all might appear before him upon the earth. Uh, but Mother's Day takes a backdrop in that we, we try to make sure that we honor them because there is a, a, a difference between a man and a woman, a mother and a, and a, and a man. Um, they both come together to create their life, but the person who pushes that life out of their, out of their womb is different. You know, it's, it's a whole different thing. I could not bear to see that happen to me, pushing a baby out. I was like, man, that's, that's too much. And I've seen three births in my life. I've got three daughters. I've seen three births. And, you know, God is amazing. All I can say is that he's amazing that he put that on a woman. Why a man would want to be a woman, I just don't understand. It. Doesn't want to really want to be a woman because he don't want to do that part. Don't want to do that part. But pain through affliction um, is this lesson. It's going to be a combination of a couple of lessons that I put together. Um... But we got to understand <clears throat> that there's a road that's much easier that we can take. And that road is just by understanding what faith is. Uh, uh, 11, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, by, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him so we can have faith we don't have to have pain we can have faith and believe in what the bible tells us but there's going to be pain if we try to alter god's message god's word that tells us how to have faith the romans 10 17 said faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of god and Dwayne taught a great lesson this morning about the mothers and we spoke for a brief moment uh as we were fellowshipping i spoke to Dwayne. i got the lesson did you get yours? Did you get your your, your, your part? <clears throat> and uh, I think the part I got out the lesson, as I said to him, was that that Mary, um, she didn't elevate herself and exalt herself. She was a lowly servant. And she took that position, even though God chose her highly. He chose her highly. Now, if anybody wants to be higher than her and say that because you, because you had, a, you, you, you birthed a child, uh, did you birth Jesus? No, you didn't birth Jesus. But you'd have, you have, you did birth a child though, which is admirable and which is to be glorified in this in this particular setting. Uh, you know, we all we all um, have houses. We all have houses, and we all have things in our house that we give honor to. And we put things, we put things in different places. Of course, I put something down. My wife might put that up because it might not be honorable enough. Well, she might put something in that spot. And I look at it and say, okay, that looks better. At the same time, I'll sneak my little thing out and put it somewhere else. You know, but, uh, you know, uh, we put, put things in their proper place. Put things in their proper place. And, you know, all things are put there and they have honor in that particular place, in that house. And so you walk through, you say, oh, it's beautiful. We put this there, we put that there, that there. But all things have a purpose. All things have a purpose. And so... We understand that. Mark 10. Mark 10 tells us that. You know. We have to honor God because. We have to do what God says. But we as men. We, and women. We have our own mind. We have our own beliefs. And our own thoughts. And sometimes we don't do just what we're supposed to do. We don't. But it's not impossible to do what God said to do. It's possible. All we have to do is just do it. Um, so, 
Mark 10, 27 says that, uh, uh, that, and Jesus looking upon them saying, with men it is impossible, with God, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. All things. But we don't, we can't, we can't try to put a, a, a square peg in a round hole. We can't. We can't do that. There are some things that God has put in place for us that we have to do just the way he says do it. Yes, we make mistakes and God says we can repent of those mistakes. God will forgive us. We see forgiveness in the Bible. And we're going to look at an example in the Bible, a matter of fact, of forgiveness. This person, this person desired the road of affliction instead of the road of just having faith and believing in God and doing things right from the very beginning. And I don't think anybody does that. Is the hand up, sister? Is the hand up? Okay. And anybody, I don't think anybody just does that. Um, you know, being born again as a new person, fully, fully grown, and having to understand God's word. We come out the womb, we make mistakes, then we correct it. We make mistakes, then we correct it. As we walk, we correct our walk. Well, some of us come out the womb and we desire just to be evil. We desire to take on the old path. We take out the old path. Oh, Sister, um, uh, Sister Lauren has a comment. You, know, but you were saying that you know, there are easier ways for us to um, live life, basically. But that we have to be uh, obedient, basically obedient to God. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, you said we're going to uh, suffer pain. Mm -hmm. Eternal pain. If we die that way, we will. Yeah. Eternal. Yeah. Amen. Not just pain. Mm -hmm. It'll never go away. Forever. <laughs> Meaning that is a major motivation. Amen. Amen. I mean, it'll never stop. Yeah, amen. Even though we know that. And that's the thing about it. Even though we know that. We still got bad people in the world that know that. He tells us to work out our soul salvation with yeah. fear and trembling mm -hmm. and the thought of that eternal lake of fire, it'll never stop. Mm -hmm. It's worth working it out with fear and trembling now. So you're taking the path, you're taking the easy path. You're not you're taking the faithful path. Amen. Because you realize that you know that 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 at the end of the week. At the end of the week, we're going to work 48 hours. At the end of the week, we're going to get a wage. At the end of the life, we're going to get a wage. It's eternal damnation. Yeah. You tell, you're choosing a path right now. Yeah. And you're choosing a path of faithfulness and you walking better. like God says to walk. But there are a lot of people who choose affliction. They better wake up. Amen, Dwayne. No, I, I was yeah. just thinking about the scripture yeah. you just read. Right I was thinking about the scripture you just read, Mark chapter 10 and 27. Jesus looking upon them and saying, with men it is impossible. But with God, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. And people typically take this scripture in the in the affirmative of the positive and say, "Okay, there's nothing that God can't help or can't fix or can't do." But the crazy, as she was making that statement, and it just, it just dawned on me, <laughs> like it's not impossible for God to preserve people for eternal destruction either. Amen. You know what I mean? Because people think, like, how can God let somebody suffer forever? Like. People, people think that's also like unbelievable or like impossible, mm -hmm. but with, like with the scripture saying with, with God, all things are possible. So that's possible too that God can preserve those that have done right for eternal peace and joy, and those that have done wrong, He He can turn His back and leave people for eternal destruction too. Mm -hmm. Like that's there's nothing that's impossible for God, including you know wrath and destruction. Amen. It's crazy. Amen. Yeah. I guess some people choose to, to be crisp when they go to when they go to hell. Crisp and not moist. I mean, you know. Me myself personally. Amen. Me myself, I don't choose that path. It's rough enough path right here, learning the lessons of life. And I don't want to have to, 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 to deal with people in hell that I that that in life that were wicked. And you didn't see how wicked they were because you were in a God protected you from them and the evil that really lurks about and how evil they really are. But you have to live forever with these people. Ever. And ever. And ever. And so, and so, and so, 
I was listening to a, a, a person who, who wrote a book. That's fine to write a book. I got your sister right here. That's fine to write a book. But the book has your ideas in it. Your ideas in what you believe. You know, and you know, anybody can write one. I thought about that as I was reading. I said, what a wonderful thing to write a book. It'll be my ideas and my thoughts. You know, and, um, but if your book is not filled with facts, and the facts are twisted out of it, we don't know what's right and what's wrong. Because we don't have real history anymore. Only fact that we have is this book right here. So if you want to write a book, commentate on the Bible, on what it says, and then add your little thoughts and keep on going with the Bible and write that book. It won't be a bestseller because people won't like it. They won't like it. So I'm going to give you a comment. I'm going to roll through the scriptures right here. Give you another comment right here, Sister Lauren. You know, people won't question if they buy a James Patterson no novel, for example. Who questions? Hmm, I wonder if uh, James Patterson wrote this book. Man. <laughs> I mean, seriously, nobody questions that. Amen. Why do they question the only book that's inspired by the only living God? Nobody runs around questioning if this was truly the author of another of a good novel. But a very good point. So why did they question and critique this so? Very good point. Put us under the gun. They fight on uh, the unadulterated truth broadcast. People are just attacking them. You know. Uh, Think no Wayne. other Bible anybody I mean no other book any, does anybody refute the author? That's they right. question the who authored the book. If it says it was authored by James Patterson, then they just accept it like that. I, I love I love that we stay in a free country that we have to say what we're gonna say. And then as far as not uh, conforming with his word, here's what gets me in, in terms of fear. We don't know. I could drop dead when I walk out here. I could drop dead before mm -hmm. I while I'm in here. So he just says, "Be faithful unto death." Well, death could be today. <laughs> Meaning, we don't know when death is going to come. Mm. Amen. Amen. So good, good comments, sister. You know, I mean. That same day, you're going to be torment or paradise. Like, uh, Amen. 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 But that same day, you're going to be torment or same day. Amen. 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 Oh, That's all right. Let us look at scriptures. Thank you, sister. Let us look at scriptures. I believe the Wayne called those people haters earlier. They're haters. I mean, it don't just happen to the Bible, but it happens if you have a certain belief. You have a uh, you have a, a website or a blog. Somebody going, you know, people will tell you what they believe. You don't even see them. You see them on the street. They'll say hello. They won't speak their, what they believe, but they'll say that in in, in in an echo chamber somewhere in their room. But they won't say it to your face. These are the kind of people that hated Jesus. This is why they hung Jesus on the cross. He was always criticized. So when they hate you, when they say, when they say, woe to Lauren, or woe to Dwayne, or, or whoever in here, whoa, that person, watch that person right there. That's good. You ought to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Look at, uh, look at, uh, uh 1 Corinthians thir uh, 3, verse number 11. We're going to have to get to this character in the Bible. We sure want to definitely talk about him. For other foundations can no man lay then that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward if, you see, it'll, it'll abide. 
He said he received a reward. Mm -hmm. If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so by fire. He says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So if any of our, any, any, of any of our work survives, to write a book about the Holy Spirit and about God, the book may be burnt, but the thought lives on. The thought lives on. But if you write a book about, about uh, blaspheming God, guess what? Your work going to die and you going to die. That's, that's what, you know, that's it. You know, you can write a book about blaspheming God. Yeah, you can. Best seller on Amazon, selling a billion books. And you'll be glorified in the world, but God said, on earth, I will be glorified. On earth, everybody's going to glorify God. In other words, they're going to honor God. They're going to honor God. You don't honor God, you're not going to, you're not going to happen. Let, let's go to this character in the Bible. Let's go to this character in the Bible. We all know it. We all know about him. We all know about him. And he decided to live in affliction. He decided to live in affliction. This was one of my lessons I was getting ready to, to use. And let me say this too before we go on. My brother Ozan is supposed to be coming back in June. Supposed to be coming back in June. It may be June, a little bit June-ish. But I don't know if he's going to have a spot when he come back. I don't know if Brother C going to have a spot when he come back. He's going to be child. He's got a lot of brothers in there. You might have to get in line. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, you might have to get in line. Gonna be, brother, brother, uh, how do you? <laughs> You're going to be back in power like Nebuchadnezzar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be in line, brother. Uh, just, uh, first Corinthians 3. Uh, you mentioned, uh, if any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss, uh, but he himself shall be saved. Uh, yes, so as by fire. You know, I was thinking about be saved, so it's by fire. Uh, and, you know, 1 Peter 3, uh, 20 21, water does now, the water saves us now. Baptism does also now save us. You know, that's initial where you receive the Holy Ghost. But, you know, you're saved by the fire because it's going to try you. Everybody's got to get tried through that fire. And when you overcome that test, that trial, then you get the reward at the end. But he says that man's work shall be burnt up. You know, Noah did a lot of preaching in this time frame. A lot of his work was burnt, well, soaked, but, you know, burnt afterward. But he and his family were saved on the ark Amen. when they went on the ark. Amen. And so Paul preached to a lot of individuals, mm -hmm. but a lot of his work maybe was burnt. Some of it was saved. Yeah. We don't know. He doesn't know, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, he desired that all his work be saved. You know, you don't know which of the Corinthians uh, repented. He had the second, second Corinthian letter. He still said, when I get there, I'm going to reprove some of sin. He was still on the second letter rebuke, rebuking them of sin. So, pray they all got it right. But, mm -hmm. ideas he's mentioning, uh, each individual gets saved by fire. When you turn out to be silver, precious stones, or mm -hmm. gold, if you turn out to be wood, hay, stubble, you don't make it. You get, mm -hmm. you get roasted. And so, that's why it's needful to... to read the bible it's god's message from heaven to earth to teach us how to think and lead us in every scenario mm -hmm. on earth every personality on earth is Amen. you can read you can catch them in the scriptures and it guides you to be able to overcome uh as romans 8 says to be a conqueror the bible says more than conquerors mm -hmm. uh because it gives us the answer mm -hmm. you know to life and every person on this earth situation government uh whatever it may be and uh i just wanted to say that because we can, everybody in this room can overcome and make it on that day amen we just each and every day follow the instructions and we'll be more knowledgeable that right. day than we were in the past we just keep adding so, all right, right. amen thank, thank you brother thank you brother god is long suffering too so so the, today is a, is a day of hope today is hope whoever hears this 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 message is a day of hope i mean you can you can be a murderer Paul was a murderer. You know what I'm saying? You can be you can be any type of bad thing that you think is the baddest thing. I'm the baddest dude ever ever lived, ever walked on earth. You ain't bad, he's not bad as some of these cats in the Bible. 
You ever had hooks in your nose and drag? Mm. Your, eye, your eyeballs punched out? Mm. Yeah, hooks in your nose? Oh, no, you ain't the baddest one. Mm. You ain't the baddest one. Well, we're going to find out about somebody in the Bible who, who was like that. Yeah, I'm not trying to uh, take away from the lesson, but I, uh, I was going to share a thought that, uh, you know, it's, it's really, you know, how amazing how some people want to say that they're uh, just like you in the, in the realm of spirituality. They want to say, yeah, we, we just alike, you know, we, we're the same faith and all that. But they have a different uh, different belief system, you know, so they have different thought process, how they think about things in, in spirituality. You know, I was talking to Jim about job, and he was talking about purgatory. He said, yeah, if you're, uh, he's Catholic, you know, that's a Catholic uh, doctrine. And he believes that the soul is everywhere, you know, like you was talking about oneness in the soul. And I was telling him, I said, well, I said, what happens after death? And he, he got quiet for me. He started listening. I said, well, I said, do you know that the fleshly body is going to go back to the dust in which it came, you know? Mm. But the soul is going to leave that body. The soul is not going to stay in a fleshly body. So the soul has to go somewhere. That soul is what's going to be alive. And I had given him an uh, example of uh, Luke 16 of the rich man and Lazarus, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, the rich man and the beggar, they both died. So after death their soul had to spend uh has to find a temporary place to dwell until the final judgment so their soul is just not all over the place you know because um the, the bible says that uh when the, after the rich man died in hell he lifted up his eyes in torment so he's in a a place of, of torment where he's suffering so his soul is in the, in a in a place of discomfort, um, but his flesh is not in the place where he's at. It's just his soul. Mm. So the soul went somewhere, but in a, in a reference to uh, the rich the rich man, his soul is in discomfort, and so now he's trying to reach his five brothers that saw far off, and now he wants to tip. Of the of his the, his tongue because it's of the flame is so hot, and he wants to quench that thirst because mm -hmm. he's so discomforted, and the Bible said that's a great goat fixed. So wherever his soul is at in the holding place, it's not going to be able to escape and go anywhere because it's sealed already. He can't cross over to you know, uh, to get the comfort that he wants from his five brothers that's far off because that great gulf is fixed. So he's in a place where he can't get out. Amen. And that's the, the same applies to the beggar. The beggar's in a place of comfort. He's in Abraham's bosom. Amen. So those two destinations, you know, it's a temporary holding place until the final day of judgment where, you know, the evil is going to be cast into the lake of fire uh, which is the second death, the lake of fire of uh, brimstone, uh, you know, it, out of darkness. Uh, that's the, um, uh, that's the Torah uh, part of hell, which is the eternal uh, damnation for the soul. So he's going to be there for a temporary uh, time until the final day of judgment. Then he's going to be thrown into that compartment of the worst part uh, which is uh, to Taurus, you know, uh, out of dark, he's going to be cast to the lake of fire. Mm. And so, but yeah, that just, you know, I just wanted to share that. But uh, in reference to your lessons, uh, I was looking at um, when Paul, he had afflictions um, where he had thorn his, in his flesh. Uh, now, he could have just asked God, you know, can you, you know, mm. When he had thorns in his flesh, he had a choice either to um, accept it the way it is and, and still serve God, you know, or he could ask God, you know, can you remove this because this is painful uh, for my flesh. My flesh is feeling the pain uh, because of the thorns uh, in my flesh. And, you know, the Bible says... Uh, that we're going to suffer as a, as a Christian, you know, and so right. mm -hmm. we can't expect God to remove 
the sufferings in our life is going to come upon us because of, of uh, being righteous because that's part of the Christian walk nah. that you're going to suffer so there's no there's no getting out of the suffering mm -hmm. part this is this is the part that God would not remove from your life because it is to Amen. help to grow you spiritually as a Christian. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Oh, very good comment. Very good comment. And within the context of suffering, we needn't be dismayed mm. when God doesn't quote unquote answer prayer. Um, he always answers every prayer. According to his perfect will. Yeah. But we never need to feel alone, Amen. without him, um, mm. because a prayer didn't wasn't answered the way we wanted to. And it might really truly, honestly, seem like it should be answered the way we mm. would like. But we never need to feel, as the youngsters say, some kind of way mm. about that. <laughs> Because we're acting, we're in good company, frankly. Amen. Because Christ crawled, called out on the cross for his God. Amen. Amen. And he didn't, no, he went to him and asked, is there any, basically any other way we can do this? That's what it was. He didn't ask. He didn't get asked. And he didn't Amen. denied him. Amen. And he didn't get up on that cross anyway. God bless you, sister. We should never feel... Amen. Any good, good lesson. He denied his very best. Yeah. And I mean, he denied him. You know, we, we might deny us whatever. <laughs> he denied him having to go through that torture, that physical torture on the cross. Mm. <gasps> Amen. We should welcome anything he denies us. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, brother, I'll be uh, a great study today. Just want to piggyback on brother Kevin uh, in Second Corinthians twelve, verse seven. And it says, "Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that was given to me, a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, uh, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Amen. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me." He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. I was glad, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And so, <clears throat> Paul's thorn is because God knew his heart, the revelations he was getting. God knew he could be exalted above measure based on all the information he was given. Amen. And Peter didn't need that thorn because God understood Peter's heart and he can manage that part of his heart mm -hmm. um but he did need rebuke from paul in galatians 2 to change concerning how he treated the gentiles that he didn't need mm -hmm. and so peter's heart peter's heart needed something different paul's heart needed something different and god knew what he needed he needed that thorn peter did not need the thorn mm -hmm. you know and sometimes as he says he's he asked for it three times he said no he's not gonna remove it god's grace is sufficient and Luke 22, Luke 22, verse 42, it says, mm -hmm. Father, if thou be willing to remove this cup from me, you know that it's not my will, but mm -hmm. but, thy, mm -hmm. but thy will be done. So, you know, God knows what he's doing. Uh, mm -hmm. He has plans for everything that he's doing. He told Jesus no. Uh, he told Paul no. Mm -hmm. And so there may be things that we ask for, but God knows exactly what that, that specific thing is for. He's going to send, he's going to, uh, send those things according to his will. Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I, he says, I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereinto I sent it. So when God has sent it to Christ, that's how he's going to die. That's how the, it was going to be for the sins to be pressed on his flesh. Paul needed this because imagine if he didn't get this storm. Then Paul would have been exalted above measure. He would have been a totally different person. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, his character would have been different. You know, his outcome would have been different. But God knew exactly what he needed uh, for for um, this walk. And so sometimes we may go through suffering. It's maybe something that we need to shape us or to keep us at that humble state or 
Hey, you know, God knows all of the measurements. Amen. 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 You know, uh, see, all these comments are good. Amen. And that's part of the lesson. That's part of the lesson. And, 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 and sometimes, you know, this is well, this is well. I have to exercise patience, and preachers have to exercise patience and say, you know, it's, it's going to be a part two. <laughs> you know? Amen. Because, you know, um, you know, and putting things in perspective, as an elder here, you know, that example has to be, be shown. It's like a husband in the house, the example has to be shown. And so you cut it short sometimes, but the, the, the lesson is the lesson that y'all taught. Amen. And that's the lesson y'all taught. The lesson is supposed to be about uh, 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 Manassas. And that's the lesson I'm going to teach anyway. Amen. We, you know, read, y'all read prelude. Read about Manassas because that's what the lesson is going to be. Amen. Because he had he had to endure pain and affliction in his life before he was accepted before God. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Why do you have to do that? Why you got to be evil in your heart? And then, you know, corrupt everybody around you, even Israel, because you corrupt. Why? And then later on you figured out, when you got these hooks in your nose, you figured out, oh, this pain hurt. That hurt. You hurting me. But you hurt God. You heard God. Uh, 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 Second Chronicles 33, 1 and follow. Second Kings 21 and follow. That is going to be our, our lesson. That's my next lesson. That's going to be my lesson. But you know, you, you know, you, bam. We're going we're gonna to do things, you know, on time. Because we will come back again tonight. And we'll hear another good message. Brother, from brother, uh, from brother Kevin. Amen. Tonight, right? Kevin Green. We're going to hear another message from Kevin Green tonight. tonight. Amen. Just want to say it out loud. <laughs> and make sure everybody knows what's going on. But, you know, that, that, that is a lesson, though. I want to thank all y'all for your comments. All y'all for your comments. Because I know when I didn't get to that right up front, I wasn't going to get to it. Because that's a long lesson. I'm reading the whole chapter almost, and I'm reading this other chapter, too. I know that's going to be another hour right there. But that's the gist of it, man. You know, he was Manassas. Wasn't like his son, Josiah, who came next. I believe it was Josiah. Next son. Grandson. 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 So, 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 we, you know, understand that, you know, that he was evil, but everything that comes after you is not evil like you. Amen. You know, so God, God restored him. Amen. God restored him. And so, that's why I said it's still hope for the sinner today. You know, you still have hope. You can still be a Christian today, no matter how bad you are. You think you're the baddest cat in town? You still can have, You can still be a member of the Church of Christ today by believing in the gospel, hearing it. Romans ten seventeen, Mark sixteen sixteen, making sure that you understand the message that you repent of your sins. Uh, uh, Luke thirteen three and five. God will hear your, your your cry. You confess that He is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You see some water over there, you can get baptized, dipped by another Christian into that water. Come up a new man, and you can start reading, reading your Bible, teaching yourself, uh, fellowshipping with the saints on a weekly basis, every first day of the week. Um, before that, the Lord is going to take away your sins, Acts 2 and 38, in baptism. We're going to give you the Holy Spirit, that's going to help you understand the Bible. It's going to help you to follow Christ. It's going to help all of us, because without the Holy Spirit... No way we can we can follow Christ. We not we're not even His without that in our in our life. So uh, uh, you can be a member of the Church of Christ. Romans sixteen sixteen. Salute one another with a holy kiss. Churches of Christ salute you.